Let's take a look at how you can predict the ionic charge of elements on the periodic table. So when these elements, they form ions, what charge will they have? And it's a pretty easy pattern to figure out, one you should remember. Group one, all of these form ions with a one plus ionic charge. Group two, all these are two plus. We skip the transition metals. They will always be positive, but we really have to look at what they're bonded to to figure out their ionic charge. Group 13 is three plus, 14 is four plus, and then we go down three minus, two minus, one minus, and zero. All of these, the noble gases, are neutral. So that's the trend the way I remember it. One, two, skip the transition, three, four, and then we go down four minus, three minus, two minus, one minus, zero. All right, you got it? Now you're gonna try. Pause and figure out the ionic charge for these elements. Sodium, iron, sulfur, and argon. Figure out the charges when these elements form ions. Pause, give it a try. So sodium, sulfur, and argon, pretty easy if you know the trend. Iron, we'd have to see what it was bonded to. For example, if it was bonded to sulfur, that would give us more information. In this trend, it's not perfect. If we looked at a more detailed, more nuanced trend for the charge on ionic compounds on the periodic table, that would look like this. Group one, group two, that's the same. Transition metals we skip, and some of these are called the post-transition metals. We don't know those either unless we look at what they're bonded to. Zinc, always two plus, silver one plus, and these other ones here. So I'd recommend you memorize the trend we first looked at and then just make sure you know that some of the post-transition metals, we don't know their charge, and zinc and silver, real important. That's it. That's how you predict the ionic charges on the periodic table. If you need help memorizing the polyatomic ions, jump to the next video on how to memorize the polyatomic ions. It's Dr. B. Thanks for watching.